Okay, in this example, we're going to have a function, and we're just going to try to match up a graph with the uh, with the formula. So here, we want to figure out which graph goes with the absolute value of x over 2x plus 1. So here we've got, you know, three different graphs. Um, you know, just to point out some differences, notice the first one has a single horizontal asymptote at 1 half. Uh, the second and third both have asymptotes at negative 1 half and positive 1 half horizontal asymptotes. They all have vertical asymptotes at negative one-half, um, so a few little differences. You know, we could certainly do this one without um, really any sort of uh, calculus, but we'll look at some of the calculus ideas as well. So, you know, sort of the first thing I think we could do is just make this into a piecewise function. So recall the absolute value of x. If x is less than zero, Instead of, uh, you know, when we take the absolute value of x, we don't just use the original value because it's already negative. We have to take the negative of that. And if x is, say, greater than or equal to 0, well, the absolute value of x is just x. But, well, if we divide all of that by 2x plus 1, we can just divide this by 2x plus 1 and this one by 2x plus 1. And now we've got our different formulas. So if we wanted to maybe think about, for example, uh, even horizontal asymptotes, we could look at the limit as x goes to negative infinity and the limit as x goes to positive infinity. So as x goes to negative infinity, we're using x coordinates less than 0. So there we would have to use the first formula. Okay, and if we do that, we've seen this trick for limits at infinity. We can, if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the, the denominator, we can just use the ratio of the co coefficients. So here I think we would get negative one-half. And as x goes to infinity, well, that's x greater than or equal to zero, so we'll use the second formula. And in that case, hey, we can do the same thing. Just take the ratio of the coefficients, and we'll get positive one-half. So... Um, Notice our first function here only has a single asymptote of y equals 1 half, so that one's not correct. I think actually even just based on the limits we can figure this out, because it says as you go to negative infinity, the y values have to approach negative 1 half. So this graph, as x goes to negative infinity, the y values are approaching negative 1 half. Um, but notice on this one, as x goes to negative infinity, the y values approach positive one half. Um, so already this third one can't be correct. And the same thing as x goes to positive infinity, it should be positive one half, which is what the second one is doing, while the third one, again, is going sort of to the, uh, the wrong asymptote. So already based on that, I would say, hey, the second one is correct, and, um, you know, that would be it. So let's look at at least, you know, maybe some, uh, you know, the vertical asymptote, uh, and at least look at like sort of regions of increase and decrease just to, you know, make some more sense out of this. Just to make extra sure, I guess. If we wanted to find vertical asymptotes, again, um, you know, we would kind of take each formula. So x less than 0 for our first formula. And, well, we would have to figure out what makes the denominator equal to 0. And well, if we subtract 1 and divide by 2, we would get x equals negative 1 half. And that certainly does fall in this interval of x being less than 0. Again, we also have to make sure it doesn't make the numerator equal to 0, but negative 1 half wouldn't. So that is definitely going to be a vertical asymptote. Um, kind of the issue is if you do, you know, the other formula, x over 2x plus 1, and that's if x is greater than or equal to 0, well, if you set the denominator equal to 0, again, we're going to get x equals negative 1 half. But that doesn't fall in the interval of where x is greater than or equal to 0. So basically, this function would have no vertical asymptotes, again, over this restricted domain. So, hey, we did find our vertical asymptote here at negative 1 half, so that works. Um, notice to find, if we wanted to figure out, for example, the uh, x-intercepts, so to find the x-intercepts, that's where we let y equal 0. And in this case, no matter, uh, you know, if you look at either formula, if you set it equal to 0, recall for a fraction to equal 0, it's the numerator that has to be 0. So we would either have to solve negative x equals to 0 or x equals to 0. Well, in both cases, we're going to get x equals 0 um, as an x-intercept, which again, certainly this graph... Um, you know, does that. 
let's see, uh, maybe let's look at some derivatives here as well, just to figure out regions of increase and decrease. So here I'm going to go back to my original function. Uh, you know, let's maybe call this f of x just to give it a name here. So we'll take the derivative um, of the first one. So it says when we take the derivative of the first function, so we'll just have to use the quotient rule. So we'll get uh, the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator, and then the derivative of the denominator would just be 2, all over the denominator squared. And again, this is if x is less than 0. Well, let's see, it looks like in the numerator, to me, if you distribute, we would get a negative 2x, but here it looks like we would have a positive 2x, so those would cancel, and we would be left with negative 1 over 2x plus 1 quantity squared. All right, well, let's see here. Um, if we think about trying to maybe find critical points of this, again, it's either where the numerator uh, equals 0, which doesn't happen, or where the denominator equals 0. And that's going to be at, again, uh, x equals negative 1 half. So in a sense, we're only kind of going up to 0 for this function. So I'm going to stop here. Notice if, you know, if we try to figure out the sign of the derivative, though, the numerator is always negative no matter what. Um, the denominator, since we're squaring it, it's always positive. So we always have a negative over a positive, which means our function would always be decreasing over this interval. And hey, uh, if you look at our function, that is what's happening. It's decreasing um, up to negative one-half, and then the function is decreasing again up to zero. So uh, this uh, first derivative certainly agrees with uh, our function, the way our function is decreasing. And we could do the same thing, um, you know, we could take the derivative of the second formula. So if we do the other derivative, and again, this is if x is greater than or equal to zero, we would get the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. Well, again, this is for x greater than or equal to 0. It looks like we would get 2x minus 2x, so that would cancel. We would have uh, a positive 1 left over over 2x plus 1 squared. Well, in this case, if we set the denominator equal to 0, we'll get negative 1 half, but that's outside of our region. So here we would just be going from 0 to infinity, and kind of the same argument. No matter what number you plug into the derivative, it's always going to be positive. And that means our function is always increasing. And hey, again, that's exactly what our function is doing. It's always increasing. So uh, you could go through the same argument as well. You know, you could take second derivatives and find uh, concavity. You would find that it should be concave down and then concave up and then concave down again. So again, just kind of, uh, you know, again, uh, reinforcing that this is definitely going to be the correct graph.